Every single Treyarch boss slash unique zombie, let's go. Fetch me their souls. Let's start off with the original boss zombie, the Hellhound. First making their appearance in Shinonuma and being in every single zombie game from that point all the way to Vanguard, they are a pretty good staple of zombies history. Starting off in Shinonuma, they would have their own round. Every couple rounds, a Hellhound round would start, and once you have completed that round, you would be rewarded with a free max ammo. And I don't think Treyarch knew exactly the precedent that they were setting in motion when they gave us a Hellhound round, and that glorious, glorious free max ammo and easy round to complete, especially when it comes to high rounds. And eventually the Hellhound started getting mixed in with regular zombies. That started all the way back in World at War. Once you get up towards the mid-teens, Hellhounds would also start spawning in with zombies. And on World at War Shinonuma with the bugginess of the Hellhounds, sometimes that was not a good combination. Now we have seen a couple different variants of the Hellhounds. On Alpha Omega, we got a Lightning Hound version. And on Firebase Z, we got a Flaming variant, which only had one mission, and that was to kamikaze the hell out of you. So no matter what type of Hellhound we have or what map we have it on, I think they are a very good staple in zombies as a whole, and I will always be happy to see them on a map no matter what they are doing, if they're mixing with regular zombies or we get our very own Hellhound round. I think they are a very, very crucial part in zombies, and I would love to continue seeing them in more maps. Warning. Breach detected on level 3. Initiate security protocol 115. The next major boss zombie that we got introduced to was honestly one of my favorites, and that is the Pentagon Thief. Only available in one map in zombies history, and that is five, and that's just a damn shame, because I really like the concept behind him. Spawning in every couple rounds, very similar to the Hellhounds, his only mission is to steal from you. If you are playing with more than one player, he will go after one person at a time, and only the person that he's going after can actually see him. And he will follow and chase you down until he can run up to you, steal your weapon, and teleport away. Now, if you can't kill him before he takes your weapon, you will be rewarded with a max ammo and a bonfire sale. If you are able to kill him after he steals a weapon, you only get a fire sale and a max ammo. But say he steals your gun and you never actually kill him, he's just going to drop a max ammo and you will not get that weapon back. And really, it all depends on how lucky you are. Sometimes if you can hit the box and get things just right, you can get a weapon that'll kill him right away. Other times, you're just shit out of luck and you're going to have to give him whatever weapon you want the least. So it is a shame that we never got to see the Pentagon Thief return because I think the concept behind him is absolutely amazing. Not having to worry about if you're going to die during a round, but having to worry that you're going to lose your best weapon is such a different struggle than you are used to in zombies, and I just love it. At the start of Black Ops 1, we got introduced to a new type of zombie. Not necessarily a boss zombie, but more of a special zombie, and that is the Nova 6 Crawlers. Now, there have been many different variants of this guy throughout the years. In Die Rise, we got the Jumping Jacks. In Black Ops 4, we got the Jolting Jack and the Nova 6 Bomber. But no matter what type of Nova 6 Crawler it is, they're all going to behave relatively the same. They're going to crawl towards you and ruin your day. With Black Ops 1, you have the standard Nova 6 Crawler, gonna chase after you, and if you kill him, he's gonna explode and leave some Nova gas behind, unless you kill him with an explosive weapon and or a melee weapon. And in Moon, we got a slightly different variant. These guys will teleport short distances to try to close the gap to get at you. And like I said, in Black Ops 2 on Die Rise, we have the Jumping Jack rounds, and these guys are just a huge pain in the ass. With the world's smallest hitbox, I can never seem to hit them. But the Jumping Jacks do have their own round, and if you can complete a Jumping Jack round with 100% gun accuracy, or if you want to skip all that, just melee the entire time, you will be rewarded with a free perk. And in Black Ops 4, we have the Jolting Jack, which is just an electrified version of the Nova 6 Crawlers. And you also have the Nova 6 Bomber, which I think the name is pretty self-explanatory. But no matter what kind of Nova 6 crawler it is, they are still relatively easy to deal with. They are just a little bit more difficult than your average zombie. With them being on the ground and crawling into the Nova gas and maybe the teleportation and maybe the electricity and the explosions. But they are still very, very easy to deal with. I think explosive weapons honestly might be your best bet. It would be pretty hard to miss these guys if you're just firing anything that shoots a, a big boom right at the ground. Warning, re-entry detected. All security personnel are high alert. One of the most overpowered boss zombies has to be the Space Monkeys. Introduced on Ascension, and thank god they were never really returned. Well, they kind of did in Shangri-La, but I'll get to that here in a minute. But these guys have their very own special round, and their health scales. So they're going to get stronger and stronger the higher rounds you go. And 
And at a kicker, it takes two shots from the Thunder Gun, which does an infinite amount of damage to kill these suckers. So not only if you're going to high rounds do regular guns not work on these monkeys, but you also have to take a lot of Thunder Gun ammo to kill them. And to top it all off, they can steal your jug. These guys, when they spawn in, their goal is to not kill you, but their goal is to ruin your day. They're going to run after every single perk and try to steal it. Now, say you are able to be really good at your job and you're not going to let any of these monkeys touch the perk machines. Well, good for you because you will be rewarded with not only a max ammo, but also a free perk. But that's only if you can manage to make sure these monkeys do not touch any of the perk machines. So no matter how much I love Ascension and that it's one of my favorite maps of all time, I still will gladly admit that these space monkeys are a huge, huge pain in the ass. And like I mentioned Shangri-La earlier, we also have a zombie monkey on Shangri-La, which is not really the same as the monkeys from Ascension, but I'm going to lump them together. On Shangri-La, you have monkeys just kind of chilling around. Their goal is to not really kill you. They don't really want to hurt you that much, but they do like them some power-up drops. Once you have a power-up drop on the map, these monkeys will run at it and try to steal it and take it back to their hut. And as they are taking it back, they will continually change it and cycle it through various power-ups. Now, it is possible to get a free perk drop from these guys. If they take a max ammo power-up, as they are running back and stealing it, they will constantly change it, and real quick, if you are very fast enough, you can kill them when they have a free perk. But other than the fact that they can give you some free cool drops and that they're worth 500 points, which can be very, very beneficial early on, not much is really done by these guys other than hooting and hollering and screaming at you constantly through the map. I just wish that free perk power-up drop lasted a little bit longer because never in my history of zombies have I actually been able to get a free perk from these guys. And believe me, I've tried. Time to get to work. If there's one thing you can never say about Black Ops 1 zombies, it's that they didn't try to innovate, because just look at the boss zombies. We have some of the most interesting ones in this game, and there's probably none better of an example than George Romero, one of the most hated yet beloved boss zombies of all time. Not only is he incredibly annoying, spawning in on round 1 and constantly following you around throughout the map, but he's also very, very beneficial. That is if you can manage to take him out, because this man has a lot of health. He has a quarter million health, for every player in the game. So if you're playing solo, 250,000 health. If you're playing two players, half a million. Three players, 750,000. And if you have four players, he has a million points of health. To put that into perspective, if you're playing solo, George has the same amount of health as like a zombie on like round 65 somewhere in there. So he is very, 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 very tanky. The best way you're going to be able to kill him is honestly by using one of the pack punch sniper rifles. Probably the dragon off is honestly the best way to go. Get the dragon off, go for headshots. You will be able to take him out very, very fast and you can collect that free perk drop. Now, if you have done the Easter egg, instead of getting a death machine, you will get the wonder waff instead. So George Romero has a lot of benefits to him, but he also has a lot of negatives. He is very tanky. He constantly follows you throughout the map. If you anger him, he will start sprinting at you. He'll electrocute you sometimes to slow you down. And when he's in this rage mode, he is very, very fast. So he will constantly be right on your ass. So George Romero is a double-edged sword. He's very, very good for you, but he can also be the worst thing to ever happen. Or you could just not deal with it at all, and if you get the upgraded VR-11 and shoot him when he's in water, then he'll just go away for that round. Now, you won't get any of the benefits, but you also don't get any of the negatives. And it really sucks that in Togder Toten, we never got to see a return of George Romero. I would definitely love to see him return in the future in some way, shape, or form. We got a little hint of him in Togder Toten, but we never really got another full George Romero experience, and that's just a shame. Now in Shangri-La, we had the monkeys, but we also have two other boss zombies. The OG original Napalm zombie was a being in and of itself. It wasn't just a zombie that caught on fire. This was a dude that wanted to get next to you, turn up the heat just a tad, and explode and try to melt you down. These guys do not run. They walk menacingly throughout the map, and you can tell one is near you once your screen starts acting like it's catching on fire, and if they get close enough, they will explode and leave a fire trail on the ground. Now this can kill you, but it can also be pretty useful because it can also kill other zombies. And like I said, the OG original version was in Shangri-La. We've also seen some watered down versions in other maps, like Origins, Green Run, Gorod Krovi, and things like that, but the OG true original one was on Shangri-La. Now, another zombie that was a one and done was the Shrieker zombie or the Sonic zombie. This one was only ever available in Shangri-La and this guy was pretty annoying as well. He would run up to you, yell in your face, and your vision would go completely blurry. Other than that, there was really nothing special about them. They don't drop anything useful. They don't really do anything useful around the map. Their whole mission is to make sure that you have the most annoying zombie experience 
of all time. Anything that affects your vision and zombies, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. So it's no wonder that we never got to see the Shrieker zombies really ever return. Now the last map in Black Ops 1 we got was Moon, and with Moon we were introduced to the Astronaut Zombie, who I think was kind of a cool concept, but like in practice is incredibly annoying. Even though I love Moon, I don't like this boss zombie that much. I don't like boss zombies that really don't have a give and take to them. This guy really doesn't do anything beneficial, and he's nothing but cons. Like look at George Romero for an example. Plenty of negatives, but also plenty of positives. This guy is just all negatives. I swear, every time he grabs me, he takes my juggernaut. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This guy was only ever available on Moon, and he spawns in from round one. And his health will scale depending on what round you're on. But say you spawn him in on round one, and you never kill him. And then you go to round 50, his health will still be as if he was on round one. And this guy will just follow you around and try to grab you. He will not kill you, but he will grab you, teleport you, and steal a random perk. And he will do some damage as he does it, but he will not kill you. And the coolest part I would say about this guy is if you're playing with friends, the red name that appears above him will be someone that was on the host as friends list, instead of if you're playing solo, it's just a list of predetermined names. Now when you do kill him, he will give off a blast very similar to a QED, and that can kind of be useful, but considering his health scales and goes up every round, it's not really too helpful if your end goal is high rounds. So I like the aesthetics of this guy. I think it's very, very creepy to have an astronaut zombie constantly following you and stalking you through the map. But I think the implementation of him could have been much, much better. But still, for the end of the game boss zombie, the astronaut, I guess he can get a pass. On to Black Ops 2. With Black Ops 2, we unfortunately got the Denizens. Thankfully, only available on Transit, and also available on Nocturne Toten on COD Mobile, but we're not focusing on COD Mobile. These guys have to be the most annoying boss zombie of all time. Anytime you are in the fog, you're going to hear the screeching first, and then you're going to hear the panic in your own voice as you desperately try to keep running before these things jump on your face, and then now you have to knife them to get them off. You can't always shoot them before they do jump on you, but then you're just going to be wasting so much ammo. And even if you do have the Galvanuckles and or the Bowie knife, you're still going to have to melee them at least twice before they jump off you. The only good thing about the Denizens is that they can open up the teleporters on transit for you, but even then, the teleporters are like five. You completely teleport to a random location, so what's the point? The Denizens are awful. I'm so glad that they never returned because these things, in my opinion, are the worst of the worst. Also in transit, we got the Avogadro, who made another appearance in Alpha Omega as the Easter Egg's final boss. On transit, the Avogadro will spawn in after you have turned power on. If you happen to end the round during a thunderstorm, he will spawn in on the next one. And on transit, he's much easier to deal with than he is in Alpha Omega. On transit, you can hit him with an EMP grenade or just melee him multiple times, and he will go away until you end the round during another thunderstorm. The only thing the Avogadro can really do that can kind of screw you up is he can EMP the bus and disable it for quite some time. And depending on where you're at when this happens, that can kind of be a very, very bad thing. But as long as you deal with him fairly early on, he's really not that bad. Now, compared to his Alpha Omega boss battle, he is much, much stronger. As you are trying to pretty much beat the Easter egg by filling all the canisters, he will follow you around and try to kill you the entire time. And there's also a way that he can down you right away once you have finished filling a canister. So it's very safe to say that the Avogadro in Alpha Omega is much, much stronger than he was in Transit. I'm not gonna lie, I like the Avogadro. I think he is one of the coolest looking boss zombies, you know, no homo. But his whole concept and design, I think, is very, very interesting. A plus on that. Next up isn't really a boss zombie as much as it is a unique variant. And this is the Armored Zombie. First introduced in Die Rise with the soldier zombies that take two knives on round one instead of one knife. We didn't really see much of these guys after that until Cold War when we got introduced to the actual armored zombies. And there's really nothing special about them besides their looks and they're a little bit stronger than normal zombies. But I still felt like they were different enough from regular zombies that I had to include them or else people would get very very mad at me. And I am a fragile little butterfly and will cry. I'll do it. Don't test me. The day has arrived. Nine. Nine. Impossible! Enough. What? You belong to me! 
Brutus, in my opinion, is a very good boss zombie, but he's also incredibly annoying. Mostly known for being on Mob of the Dead and Blood of the Dead, the second this man spawns in, his whole mission is to make sure that you can't see a damn thing. Apparently, this man weighs at least five tons because every time he steps on the ground, a miniature earthquake starts happening and your whole screen starts to shake. In Mob of the Dead, he's just your average boss zombie that spawns in occasionally and can completely ruin your day by locking the mystery box, by locking perks. He can lock tons of different things, but he's really not too difficult to deal with. Shoot off his helmet and you can take him out very, very quick. On Blood of the Dead, that's a little bit different of a story. He has a much bigger role, especially when it comes to the Easter egg. Overall, though, he will mainly behave the same. His looks have changed a little bit throughout the years. But the one thing that definitely uh, does remain constant is that goddamn screen shaking that I just, I hate so much. My name is Edward Richthof, and I have been trying so very hard to do the right thing. Now, I'm not sure if Edward Richthof in counts, but I'm a count it. After you have completed all the Black Ops 2 Easter eggs in Maxis's favor, Richthof and Soul now randomly hops from zombie to zombie, and he is forever condemned to a life of torture. And then, you know, like, zombie storyline stuff happens, and then zombie Richthof goes on a little adventure, then eventually he gets his own body back. But as of right now, we're just talking about Barry. There's really nothing too different from Richthof and Zombie than the other ones, other than the fact that he does have some pretty unique dialogue. Nein! It cannot be like this forever! There has to be a way to break the cycle! What? No, nein! This is disgusting! This is not how things are supposed to turn out! What did I ever do to deserve this torment? It's like you're not even listening to me anymore. I just want to feel needed again. What if I'm trapped for all eternity? Do you have any idea how long that is? I'm trapped! I'm rotting! I'm hungry! Help me, Samuel! I was always a good friend to you, wasn't I? Ah, the bodies are so filthy, so dirty, so stinky! Ah, I'm gonna kill you to stop eating brains and take a shower! It's horrible! Curse you, Maxis! You want your stupid girl! You are always ruining my fun old days! I'm still here, you know. Ah, you found it! So good! So good! Now you go from grumbly hateful to humbly grateful. Ah, I rhymed! The clock is ticking, my little pink sausage! You better move those porky little legs! Ah, you fools! Why did you listen to him? This is my the Buried Witches, aka Ghost, or Gold Diggers, because they do just kind of want to take all your money, are very unique and awesome at the same time. Instead of really damaging you, they can do that, but they really just want to steal all your money and they will really only spawn inside of the mansion. As long as you stay outside of the mansion, you really don't have to deal with them. But once you have activated the ghost round, or once you have run through the mansion, and you kill them all, you will get a free perk. I mean, how many other maps have really made getting a free perk this easy? And you can also do an Easter egg with the little witches that will give you another free perk. They really just said, hey, we're going to go balls to the wall on Buried, and you're going to be able to get all the perks as many times as you want. So I'm a huge fan of the Waifu Ghost. I think the aesthetic behind them is amazing. I think what they do is very unique and different from other boss zombies, and you get free perks. That's the best part. And they're insanely easy to deal with. It's not like they have a lot of health or anything. A simple wall weapon is more than enough to take these things out. origins we got the templar zombies now there's really two types of them there's the first kind that just spawn in with regular zombies and there's also the other kind that have to deal with the generators once you activate a generator these guys will spawn in and try to prevent you from activating the generator and for every one you kill you will get 10 points but you can only max out at 100 points so it's really not worth it to try to like hoard them up and maximize your points because you're only going to get 100 the other kind that spawn in are kind of like dog rounds. Every certain amount of rounds, they will spawn in and try to retake back the generator. And if you manage to kill them while they're taking a generator without an upgraded staff, you'll be rewarded with a free max ammo. 
and for some reason whenever i'm playing origins these guys always want to take generator six first and in my opinion that's like the most annoying one to take because going back in there on a high round and getting back out alive you're either going to waste a lot of ammo or you're probably going to die so generally speaking i usually just let them have that one and then i'll get them on the rebound at a different generator because i ain't dealing with that so like a lot of boss zombies these guys are good and bad they will give you max ammo and there's plenty of ways you can like manipulate the system with like only having three generators activated and then activating a fourth and that spawns them in next round there is a lot of little things like that that high rounders use but in general these guys are very very weak you don't need any certain weapon to kill them you can take them out with pretty much anything be careful on round eight because that is when the panzer spawns in we have two different types of panzers you got the one on origins and the one on de and revelations the one on origins will always spawn in on round eight so make sure you're ready for that and once he spawns in he will chase you down and try to grab you and once he grabs you he's going to hit you with that flamethrower and if you really don't have any good weapons you can best bet that you're probably going to die so make sure you stay out of reach of his grappling hook and his flamethrower and just take him out from a distance, aim for that little light, or if you are lucky enough to have a staff, just use a charge shot from the staff and that will take him out pretty easy. But my god, if I hear one more person remind me to be careful because the panzer spawns in on round 8, I might actually lose it. Because he also spawns in on round 12 on Der Eisendrak, and his abilities on Der Eisendrak are a little bit different. Instead of trying to like grab you and bring you in, he's going to be shooting out these shock charges, and these things are so annoying. Because not only do they like stun you, they can also damage you, and this guy's got like pinpoint accuracy. No matter where you're at, he's going to be able to hit you. But I think I much rather prefer the shock charges than the grapply hook, because with the shock charges, there's a chance you're going to survive. If he really grabs you with that grappling hook and that flamethrower and you can't get off in time, you are probably going to die. Especially when he grappling hooks you through a horde of zombies. Oh, so many PTSD Vietnam memories. Now on Revelations, he will spawn in much, much later. So he's very easy to deal with on Revelations because you have until round 18 till this guy spawns in. And by then, you should have the Thunder Gun, the Apothecan Servant, multiple upgrades. You should be completely set by the time this guy spawns in. So on Revelations, he's really not that big of a threat as he is on Der Eisendrak and especially as he is on Origins. The Apothecans slash Keepers first made their appearance in Shadows of Evil and were pretty much in every single Black Ops 3 Zombies map from there. And in all the maps besides Der Eisendrak, there really weren't anything special. They try to stop you from doing random things around the map, like in Shadows of Evil from doing the rituals, or in Zetsubo and Ashima from getting the Skull upgrade. They really weren't too different from regular zombies and are pretty easy to deal with. But on Der Eisendrak, a Keeper just happens to get corrupted and he becomes the boss fight. And this guy is a, is a little stronger than the other ones. As you are progressing through the boss fight, he can one hit down you with an electrical attack if you aren't standing behind a pillar, so make sure you are standing behind the pillar. And after you have used the Ragnaroks and opened up his chest, you have to shoot that chest multiple, multiple times, and then he'll get injured, he'll go pout, and then he'll come back. And the best weapons to use on his chest are things that do a lot of damage really quick. So like the XM53, for an example, is goaded when dealing with him. And really the boss fight isn't too much you fighting the keeper as much as it is you running around trying not to die against panzers. You really just got to be careful with that electrical attack that'll insta down you because that thing has killed me one too many times. Shadows of Evil also has a Fallout New Vegas Easter egg because one of the main enemies in the map is the Bloatflies from Fallout, aka the Parasites. They have their own round. They can spawn in after you take off a Margwa head. And on Revelations, instead of being yellow, they are red. And these guys are just annoying they just fly around and shoot you they don't do much damage they're very very weak but my god is it hard to hit them because they just keep dodge duck dip dive and dodging all over the goddamn map but hey they make for a very easy round once their round comes up you kill them all you get a free max ammo and on early rounds i guess they can be used for a little bit extra points after you shoot off the margo's head you get the points from that and then you get the points from killing this guy so they have their uses but I still will always call them bloat flies because that is exactly what they look like they look like they came straight from fall of new vegas Damn, boy, he's thick, boy! One of the more thick zombie bosses that we have seen is the Margwa, first introduced in Shadows of Evil and making a return in Revelations. And there's actually three different types. These guys are thick as all hell. I mean, look at that. God damn! But the first regular Margwa we got introduced was in Shadows of Evil, and he'll just chase you down and try to slam attack you, and that slam attack is very, very powerful. And occasionally one of his three mouths will be open and glowing, and all you have to do is shoot that head and then go on to the next ones, but beware, because every time you shoot a head off, he starts running faster. But those heads are worth a lot of points, so it's kind of worth it. 
or if you just really kind of want to like skip all of that if you have the pop shocks gobble gum and you melee a margua it will kill them right away so if you want to like ignore all of that stuff you could just run with pop shocks now on revelations there are three different types of marguas you got the base margua you also have the fire marguas and these guys will slam the ground and a burst of fire will come straight at you and it's kind of slow and the range isn't really too long so other than their slam attack they really aren't too difficult to deal with and you also have the Void Marguas, which have an attack very similar to the Void Bow on Derizendrak. And those guys will open a Void and some Skulls will come out and try to chase you down. These attacks, they do some damage to you, but it's not like it's be all or end all. Really, the attack you have to watch out for is the Slam attack. As long as you can stay far away from that, the other ones are just kind of more of a nuisance than anything. But once you are doing the Revelations Easter Egg and you start running into multiple and multiple of these Marguas, that's when you really want to be on your A game, especially when looking at these minor attacks, because again, these attacks aren't incredibly strong, but when you have like 50 of them in one enclosed space, then it kind of adds up. Come here, follow me, follow me. Yeah, infinite meatball spawn now. So shit's about to get crazy. I have no idea who in their right mind calls these things insanity elements because they are meatballs. I don't care what you tell me, these things are meatballs. And these guys just will spawn in and roll right at you and explode and deal some damage to you and after a certain amount of rounds these guys will also have their hellhound round and spawn in with parasites and once you clear the round you will get a free max ammo but where these guys shine is during the shadows of evil easter egg during the capture the flag step these guys will just constantly spawn in and bombard you so if you do not have a shield during that step and your aim is not on point things will get a little hectic but if you're not doing the Easter egg and you're just going to high rounds, these things are really just an afterthought. You never really pay too much attention to them. But when you spawn in, you, you know their name is, is Meatballs. And very similar to the Meatballs, you have the mechanical version of that, the Raps, which are available on Gorod Krovi during the Nikolai boss fight. Sometimes he will shoot the Raps out and they'll chase after you and explode. They work the exact same as the Meatballs. They just are mechanical instead of like fleshy and weird. The Shadow Man. One of the bigger boss zombies for Black Ops 3 was the Shadow Man. And it's really weird because the Shadow Man himself doesn't really attack you. He kind of just sits there menacingly. He's just standing there menacingly. And summons a bunch of other boss zombies to attack you. So he's kind of honestly a little bitch, not willing to get his hands dirty, kind of a little too scared of us. But on Shadows of Evil, he just teleports around and you just have to constantly keep shooting him until you eventually kill him. And it's kind of the same thing for Revelations, except for you're playing the floor is lava the entire time and there's a couple marg walls around. But the boss battles in Shadows of Evil and in Revelations are oddly similar. For some big bad guy, you thought the Shadow Man would have been a lot harder and more difficult to deal with. But in reality, I find the marg walls infinitely harder to deal with because this guy doesn't really do anything. He just sits there again, menacingly. So other than having a really cool hat and a dope ass beard, I didn't really care for the Shadow Man. I thought, honestly, he was kind of like a huge letdown for an overall boss zombie. But hey, when you have a sick hat and beard like that, what more do you want? Spooky, scary skeletons speak with such a screech. One lesser known boss zombie is going to be the Skeletons, available in Derizendrak and in Ancient Evil. But in Derizendrak, you have to do an Easter egg to get these guys to start spawning in. And that Easter egg is very, very simple. You just have to find three skulls located around the map, find all the three skulls, and these guys will start spawning in. And they're nothing special. They are literally just zombies, but instead of zombies, they're skeletons. I know this video is only talking about Treyarch zombies because if not, this video would be way too long and I don't have that kind of time. But they're also in Raven the Redwoods, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, Raven the Redwoods? Beautiful looking map. But in Ancient Evil, the same deal with their eyes and drag. They're just regular zombies that spawn in as you try to do things. But because you have to do an Easter egg in their eyes and drag to actually get these guys out, I thought they definitely deserve a spot on this list. Make your peace, Hellspawn. The Thrasher is a very formidable foe. He has many of attacks and he can also grab down players. This guy is a true menace. Spawning in only on Zetsubunashima, he can shoot out spores that are going to stop you in your place. He has a berserk mode where he just goes completely apeshit. And if you happen to go down around him, he's going to pick you up and just like carry you around like a little itty bitty baby. And to top it all off, he has a strong melee attack, very similar to the Margua, where even if you have Jug, you're going to be a two hit down. So this guy is very, very powerful. And the only real way to take him out, well, there's two ways. Pop all the spores on his back and make sure he doesn't devour a zombie to regain some of those spores or just use the KT4. The KT4 is like the goat to use against him. And there is also the Takio Thrasher boss fight. So once you have completed the Easter egg, you're going to notice that Takio may or may not have become a Thrasher. 
and he really doesn't do too much in the boss fight like this might be one of the easier boss fights that i've ever done as you progress through the battle quote unquote you just gotta shoot the spores that appear and it's really easy he'll spawn in a bunch of thrashers but like i said as long as you have the kt4 which is goat like this easter egg boss battle really isn't that difficult i think the steps getting to the boss fight are way more difficult than the boss fight itself The spiders are really cool and they actually do something that I've been wanting in zombies for a long time. They can kind of rebuild doors. First introduced on Zetsuba and making another appearance in Revelations on Zetsuba and Ashima. If the spider is kind of like dicking around over where a door used to be, he can spin a web right where that door was and then bam, it's basically like you never bought that door in the first place. Zombies can still spawn on the other side, but they can no longer pass through. And this can be very, very useful depending on what strategies you're trying to run, where you can just basically wall off an entire section of the map so zombies can't attack you from that side. And say you want to get rid of it, all you got to do is toss a grenade at it or shoot the KT4 at it and it'll go away. And these spiders themselves are very, very weak. They do have a ranged attack where they kind of spit at you, but that really isn't too dangerous for you. And they are kind of fast, so they might be hard to hit. But in my opinion, that whole build a web and block a door thing is so good. And also speaking of spiders, there is the giant spider in Zetsubo Noshima that's kind of like a mini boss battle. If you wanted Widow's Wine and you wanted to upgrade the KT4, you're going to have to fight this thing. The only way you're going to be able to hurt this thing is by shooting its mouth when it's open. And this spider is very, very strong. If you don't have Jug and it's able to melee you, it's going to be a one hit. And even with Jug, it'll be a two hit. So as you are fighting this thing, he will constantly be spawning in other spiders and also spewing web at you, which can damage and slow you down. Now, if you know what you're doing, this is a very easy boss fight. But if you're like me and a complete idiot that doesn't pay attention, this will be a little bit harder than you're used to. But like I said, once you have done it, you will get the part for the KT4 and you will have access to a pool of delicious Widow's Wine. So this is definitely going to be a boss battle that you're going to have to face one way or another. I think the Mangler for a time during Cold War's life cycle became like Treyarch's favorite boss zombie because this fucker was everywhere. First coming out in Gorod Krovi and then being in like literally everything in Cold War. In my opinion, mid boss zombie, his looks aren't anything special and what he does isn't anything interesting. In my opinion, I think the Thrasher is a way cooler boss zombie aesthetically and what he can do than the Mangler. He has a melee attack and he can try to shoot you with his futuristic robotic arm. And they're not incredibly strong, but they're not like really, really weak like the spiders or anything like that. He's honestly very, very mid tier. And in Cold War, his abilities changed a little bit. Overall, the abilities roughly stayed the same, but it takes a little bit longer for him to fire the Shockwave Cannon. And they're a little bit more armored, but they're still very easy to deal with. On Outbreak, they have more health and armor, so they are a little bit more of a challenge, but still... These guys are, are just mid of mid. I don't know why Cherik fell in love with these guys for a little bit, but my god, they love them. Technically speaking, Electrified Zombies first appeared in Call of the Dead. When George gets all pissy, he can create some. And they also appeared in The Rise and Drac, but in my opinion, the first, like, Electrified Zombie special boss kind of guy first appeared in Gorod Krovi. As you get onto the rounds during a Valkyrie drone round, which we'll get to here in a minute, if you let a Valkyrie drone kind of just like wander off and dick around for way too long, he will start spawning in these electric zombies. And they move at like your standard zombie pace, but once they get close enough to you, they can blind you and slow you down when taking damage. So they're like a little bit different than your Call of the Dead electric zombie. And they were also available in Togder Toten, and they spawn alongside regular old zombies. And once you kill one, they'll release a little explosion of electricity that can damage not only zombies, but also players. So you want to make sure you use it strategically but make sure you're nowhere near it. Not saying it's like really, really strong or anything, just a tad bit annoying. As I mentioned previously, on Gorod Krovi, we also got introduced to the Valkyrie drone. And I'm not gonna lie, these guys were a one and done, and I'm very, very glad. I just don't like them. I think the aesthetic is dumb, and I think they just don't really fit the whole, like, theme of zombies. I don't know, I just don't like them. But these guys are very similar to Hellhounds. They'll spawn in alongside regular zombies, and they also have their very own special round. And of course, during the round, as you get rid of them, you can get a free max ammo, and they can also spawn in electrified zombies. They're really nothing special. They're just glorified hellhounds that can shoot you from a distance. The only real interesting thing about them is once you get rid of all of their arms, they go like full kamikaze mode and will try to explode right next to you. That can be kind of funny when it happens, but just the regular old Valkyrie drone is just meh. One of the bigger boss battles that we've seen so far is going to be the dragon boss fight in Gorod Krovi. 
Compared to the Nikolai boss fight, which we'll talk about here in a second, this one is much easier to deal with. Really, the only thing you have to look out for is that giant fire attack, but as long as you're in these safe areas, it's really not that hard to deal with. And then once given the opportunity, just unload whatever weapons you have into the dragon until eventually you kill it. In my opinion, the biggest threat is if you're not really paying attention to when he's going to use his breath attack and all the other things that are spawning in. And piggybacking off of the dragon, the next boss fight you're going to have to take on is Nikolai and a goddamn mech suit. And the mech suit is a giant pain in the ass, because not only can he shoot explosives at you, and he can also jump up in the air and land right next to you. And with the amount of like other things spawning in, this is a very, very tough boss fight. Now, it is possible to do it solo and everything. People have done it, but it's not something that you can like go in first time without knowing anything about and expect to immediately get out of it alive. This is one of those boss fights where you definitely want to like figure out what you're doing because if not, this guy will kill you. And trust me, you definitely want to go into this knowing what you're doing because knowing the steps to get to this thing, that one like explosive step that will literally end the game if you do it wrong, this is not a boss fight you want to go into be like, oh, I can easily get to it again. So the dragon boss fight, not too difficult. You could probably waltz into that one, but the Nikolai one, you definitely want to make sure you know what you're doing once you go in here. You want to make sure you got your gobble gum set. And if you're with a bunch of buddies, you want to make sure you all know what you're doing. The last boss zombie we got for Black Ops 3 is going to be the Furies. These guys are kind of like a slingshot. That's what they remind me of because they will cock back, get ready, and then they'll just like jump and teleport right over to you. And these guys don't just spawn in one at a time. Multiple of them will spawn in and try to jump right to you and do a little damage. The number one thing that these guys like to do is make sure they pop your widow's wine. They're going to teleport at you and immediately pop that. So when these guys are around, don't really expect to have any widow's wine because these guys will damn well make sure of it. They're not very powerful. They're more of a nuisance than anything else, just like a lot of lesser known boss zombies. You don't get really anything for killing them, but they do look pretty freaking cool. But for a final be all end all zombie map like Revelations, I kind of expected a little bit more than these guys. <laughs> Now heading over to everyone's favorite zombies game of all time, Black Ops 4 Zombies. Black Ops 4 gave us the lovely Catalyst Zombies. Now there's four different types of these bad boys. You got the Fire Catalyst, which are very, very similar to the Napalm Zombies. They move very slow and will explode once killed or once they get, you know, close enough to you. You got the Water Catalyst, which are kind of like support zombies. They really don't want to hurt you. They just want to buff other zombies. So they literally are the support class of boss zombies, which I will give credit. That's very unique and interesting, and I like. You have the Poison Catalyst, which just do poison damage by being near you. They don't really want to attack you as much as just get near you and try to slowly suffocate you. And lastly, you got the Lightning Catalyst. These guys really behave very similar to the Shrieker zombie, and you guys know how I feel about getting blinded in zombies. I absolutely hate it, but these guys will kind of just shriek at you and blind and deafen you, and that will go on until you kill it or it stops screaming, and my god, these guys are annoying, and I think the winner of the coolest one definitely has to go to the Water Catalyst. Very, very different from others, and I really like that. On everyone's favorite zombies map of all time, Voyage of Despair, we got the Strokers. Now, when you think about it, the Strokers kind of have like a tragic backstory. They were former crew of the Titanic that happened to get transformed into these guys. I mean, like when you think about the real life crew in the Titanic and their position and like the fate that they got, kind of sad. These guys are very tall and lanky and they will try to mess your shit up. They have two different types of attacks. They can one, use their shovels or two, use like a ranged fireball attack to get at you. And you're going to have to deal with them regardless, especially if you want the free Kraken Wonder Weapon because you're going to need the Stroker's Key for that. And these guys will start spawning in one per wave. But as you progress to higher and higher rounds, they start spawning in in pairs. And these guys are just your typical mid-level zombie. They're not like a panzer or anything, but they're not like the skeletons. They're your typical one-up boss zombie. Zombies, something that you have to keep your eye on, but not something that you need to kill right away. Speaking of something that you should kill right away, the Blight Father. At least he patiently waits until round 15 to spawn in, but once he does spawn in, unless you get like a well-timed nuke or something, you're not going to stop that transformation. 
This man has multiple different attacks. He's got a melee attack. He has the vomit attack. He has the ranged grab attack, very similar to the panzer. And once he grabs you, you better hope and pray. The Blightfather does have some weaknesses though. Number one, the sacks on his back. That's going to be what you want to aim for. And if you use your specialist weapons, you can take him out relatively easy compared to like a normal weapon. Or if you have really powerful explosive weapons, like the Helion Salvo, which is probably like one of the best weapons in the game, you'll be able to take him out very, very fast. And similar to Brutus, one interesting thing about him is that he can vomit on things and disable them. So you know how Brutus could disable the box and perks and stuff like that? Well, the Blightfather, instead of hitting it, he just vomits on it. So it's a little different. But unlike the expensive tax that you have to pay with Brutus, all you have to do for this guy is pay 500 points. But this is definitely a boss zombie that once he spawns in, you want to like focus your attention on taking him out before he decides to grab you at the most inconvenient time. One of the weirder boss battles is going to be the Voyage of Despair Easter Egg boss fight, and that is the Sky Eye. This thing is just very weird, because like when you think about it, you're on the Titanic using like these fantasy weapons fighting a giant eye in the sky. It just makes no sense when you think about it. Like when you try to put it all together, it doesn't really make any sense. But he's kind of similar to the Shadow Man, where he just kind of sits there menacingly, but he can attack you occasionally and shoots out this like giant laser beam, so make sure you're not in the way of that. But once you have progressed enough, you will be able to start shooting him. And if you have strong enough weapons, you can take him out. And there's multiple different phases, so it's not like you're stuck in one room. You're going to be progressing through multiple areas of the ship while you fight this guy. And the hardest part about this boss fight isn't the giant sky eye. It's everything that he spawns in to come and kill you. Because it's not like he's just spawning in regular zombies. He's throwing everything he can at you to make sure that you can't shoot a giant eye in the sky. It doesn't make any sense. Now, Nine gave us three lower level boss zombies, and I'm going to talk about them all at once so I can save some of your guys' time. We first got these zombie tigers who are very similar to hellhounds, except for just running straight at you. They're going to pounce. And then they'll do that little claw swipe thing. And the zombie tigers will hit you way more often than the hellhounds would. So I think the zombie tigers are a much bigger threat than the hellhounds. And that's not saying that I don't like them or anything. I actually think they're pretty cool and I like the way they look. I just like to explain some of the little differences there are. We also have some Marauders, who are the lightly armored guys that kind of just jump around and act like spazzes the entire time. They're much more aggressive than the Destroyers, who we'll talk about here in a second, but they have less health and less armor. But they have much more offense capabilities than the Destroyer. So these guys will be on the offense team, constantly trying to get up in your face and attack you, while the Destroyers are more heavy tanky and slow. The Destroyers do have a ranged attack, and they can hit you from a distance, but compared to the Marauder, their attack is much weaker. So it seems like Nine really gave us like a good mixture of overall boss zombies. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people just generally really like this map. Now the main bosses on Nine are going to be the Fury and the Wraith, the two zombified elephants. Now this is one of the more, in my opinion, easier boss battles, mainly because the elephants are very, very strong, but they're also very predictable and very slow. They have a couple different attacks. The guys riding them can throw spears at you. It'll charge at you. It'll stomp on the ground. But as long as you can avoid their pathing, you're going to be fine. It's not like they're constantly right on your ass like George Romero in his angry state or anything. They'll charge in a certain direction, hit the wall, then turn around, then charge in another direction. They're very predictable and easy to avoid. But if you do happen to get caught up in an attack, they are very, very powerful. So I would not really recommend testing your luck on that one. But I would definitely say, as cool as this boss battle is, it's definitely one of the more easier ones. I mean, just look at this giant open space you have. You could be running in circles for days. This is such a wide open area, and it kind of makes sense. You have two giant ass zombified elephants. You're going to need a little space. So I do like this boss battle. I do like the zombie elephants. I think they are very, very cool and a nice little addition to the map. And this just keeps adding on to why a lot of people really love this map. Now, you know how I said before that Voyage of Despair was everyone's favorite map? That's because I forgot about Dead of the Night. And with Dead of the Night, we got introduced to the Nosferatu, or the Vampires, and the Crimson Ones, which are just, like, way worse. So the regular Vampire spawns in very, very frequently, and they're very agile and very aggressive for some reason. And if you get hit by one, your screen's gonna become bloody, and your health will stop regenerating for a shorter amount of time. Now, once you get to a high enough round, or if you're doing the steps for the upgrade to the Alistair's Annihilator, you get the Crimson Ones, which are just the regular vampires, but red and way more aggressive and way tougher. 
And I guess if like you held a gun to my head and said, hey, say one cool thing, a good positive thing, anything about them, I would say that they have a bat form and the bat form's pretty dope. Like, you know, kind of really fits to the old vampire lore. But I do hate them very, very much, especially the crimson ones, because even insta-kill doesn't affect them for some reason. What's the point of insta-kill if it doesn't work? Also in Dead of the Night, we got the werewolves, who would be like this map's stroker, marauder, mid-level kind of boss zombie. And they're pretty mid. In my opinion, I think the vampires are way more annoying than the werewolf. He's just really tanky. And once you kind of get the right setup throughout the map, he's really not too difficult to deal with. Even the main boss zombie, the shadow werewolf, isn't really that big of a problem even in the boss fight. He can go invisible, but as long as you follow the dust trail that he creates, it's very easy to know where he's going. And during the boss fight, just to capture him, you have to shine the three green lights on the box on the ground. And then once they are all aligned, he'll get trapped. The boss battle isn't too difficult. I would say it might be a little bit harder than the giant elephant one, but it's still not insanely difficult. In my opinion, the vampires, the guy, those, those fucking vampires are awful. I would rather have the werewolves than the vampires any day. Oh, great. Now moving on to ancient evil, we got the Genjini. I'm so dumb. Please forgive me. This dude. Having multiple arms, way too many arms that he knows what to do with, he will carry a sword, shield, and spears, and use all sorts of manners to attack. He can chuck spears at you, or he can hide behind a shield, like a little bitch, and charge up the spear and then toss it at you, and kind of make your vision go, you know, blind, temporarily blind. I hate when people do that. Why do they keep adding stuff like that in this game? I will never know. But once he spawns in, he's very hard to miss because, my god, is this guy also very, very huge. This dude is definitely on the uh, Trembolone sandwiches. And your best bet is either to have the Helion Salvo, as you probably should because that's the most overpowered weapon in this game, or just whip out your specialist weapon and take him out with that. If your specialist weapon isn't, like, all the way upgraded, it might take a couple shots, but it's still probably going to be your best option. Y'all see the packages? Oh, yeah. Everybody up in here see the packages, man. Now, one of the big baddie bosses is going to be the Pegasus, who starts off on your squad and then turns against you due to corruption. And now you got to take down the Pegasus. Now, this boss battle feels like an actual boss fight because things get hectic. You got a Pegasus flying around in the sky, taking shots at you, like doing drive-bys every time he comes by. You're shooting at him the entire time he's flying around. And then if you could somehow manage to kind of subdue him on the ground, you literally just start beating the ever-loving shit out of him. All while you're jumping from platform to platform, this boss fight goes pretty hard and can get very, uh, very chaotic at some points. Now, after you are done fighting the Pegasus, you gotta fight Perseus, aka the zombie warlord. And really, during the boss fight with the Pegasus, he's like up there doing hip thrust on the mountain, getting ready for your fight. But once you actually do fight him, compared to the Pegasus, I feel like this guy was much, much easier to battle. He does have a couple attacks, but really just come up to him and start beating the ever-loving shit out of him with like a hammer or like the sword or anything. And he goes down pretty quick. This guy is all talk. He can't really do much. He's really all talk. Compared to the other boss fight, this guy is much, much easier. Now, Alpha Omega has plenty of boss zombies slash unique zombies, but we already talked about majority of them. The last one we have to talk about is the Atom, the A-D-A-M, which is a prototype android unit. And there's actually three different Easter eggs that involve these guys, but the main one we are focusing on is going to involve shooting off all the heads and the next round will consist of only Atom units. And these androids will have more health than your regular zombie. And I'm not gonna lie, for all the trash that people and me rightfully give Alpha Omega, I think all of the Atom Easter eggs are pretty cool. If you knife off all the heads, you get this Atom unit that follows you around. And if you melee all of the heads off with the Galvan Knuckles and then go to Pack-a-Punch, this happens. Now moving on to Cold War, we're going to talk about all these boss zombies slash unique zombies together, mainly because this video is already a lot longer than I thought it would be. And also, to me personally, I don't think the Cold War zombies aren't really that unique and don't really stand out as much as the older boss zombies did, and I couldn't think of any special transitions for them, so don't hate me. But we'll start off with the heavy zombie. Depending on what map you are playing, he's going to spawn in in the 20s and or 30s, and he's really just a heavily armored zombie. That, that, that's it. There's not much to this guy. He spawns in later in the rounds. He's way more beefy, way more tanky, but he's not going to be flying around and shooting rays at you. He's just a pretty beefy zombie. 
Cold War also had their version of Hellhounds, aka the Plague Hound. And these run and act very similar to Hellhounds, and they even have their own round, which when completed will drop you a max ammo, but it's like a Hellhound and a Nova 6 crawler had a baby and then this is what popped out because once you kill them there's going to be a little nova 6 explosion and it's going to act very similar to the nova 6 crawlers and one cool thing is if you have the napalm burst ammo mod these guys are going to take more damage than normal so i really have no complaints against the hellhound slash nova 6 abomination of a love child one thing i do have an issue with is the megaton and its multiple various forms that it has it has like four of them you have the original Megaton, which just packs a huge punch, dealing a lot of damage, and is very, very tanky. Once you can take out this guy, that's when you get to the very annoying ones that can shoot you at a distance. Now they have a range attack, and they still have the same melee strength, so these guys are just a force to be reckoned with. Good thing they don't spawn in like as frequently as a lot of the other boss zombies, because honestly, I have no idea how you would deal with that. Maybe once you have all your perks fully upgraded and stuff, the Megatons aren't that bad, but I remember when Cold War first dropped, my god, the Megatons, the Blaster, the Bomber, and like the Red Hawk version were just terrible. Now another interesting boss zombie that I think a lot of people hate, but to me they aren't too terrible, and that is the Mimic. They can either spawn in like a normal zombie, or they can completely bamboozle you and pretend to be a dropped item. And there is even an Elite Mimic that is red in color and has more health. And like I said, I hear a lot of people always give crap to the Mimics, and in my opinion, they're definitely not as bad as people make it out to be. I can see why people don't like them, but I think they have a very, very unique gimmick, and I kind of like it. Next, we have like the 20,000 foot tall Orda, which is just like a lumbering giant. During the third assault wave on Firebase C, the Ordas will slowly and very leisurely, I might add, make their way to you. And if they can close the distance, they're going to unleash a huge energy beam right into the defense point, and it will keep doing this until you either kill it or until it's destroyed. And you can easily take out the Ordas, as long as you're not really relying on just like a single box weapon. You have to make sure you use like all your weapons to your disposal. You want to pull out some kill streaks, you want to pull out some special weapons and stuff. He's not that difficult to deal with, as long as you got the right equipment. Now, only available on D-Machine and Outbreak, you have the Demented Echoes, which are like the Napalm Zombies, but to the extreme. In D-Machine, they're a jump scare once you acquire the ray gun from the mystery box, and in Outbreak, they're just randomly scattered throughout buildings. And like I said, they behave very similar to the Napalm Zombies, flying at you, setting you on fire, and then exploding themselves. Treyarch seems to have like this fascination with the Kamikaze Zombies, and I still don't know whether I love that or hate that yet. And continuing on with the suicide bomber tactics, you have the Tormentor on Malwater Toten and Forsaken. These are literally the definition of suicide bombers. They will start spawning in on round 15 and they just continue coming at you and blowing up. That, that's their whole mission. They're like the Japanese in World War II. The Tormentors would totally rather have death before dishonor. The Disciple is also yet another support type zombie, but this one can also injure you as well. It will shoot out a beam at you that can constantly deal damage to you unless you stop it and it can also enhance regular zombies. Now, it cannot do this to like the heavy zombies or the armored ones. It can only enhance regular zombies by giving them more health, making them more aggressive, and making their movement and attack speed increase. And like we were talking about the water catalyst, I really kind of like support zombies. It's very different than like the generic mangler or something like that. Just some big oaf that has a lot of melee damage and a lot of health and some armor. I really enjoy when Treyarch kind of experiments outside the box. We also have Cold War's Discount Avogadro, and I'm not even bullshitting you because they are literally referred to as the Avogadro in the game files. We have the Tempest. This is literally just a reskinned Avogadro. It does everything the Avogadro does. It teleports around, it shoots beams of electricity at you. And if you're playing on Outbreak, a bunch of Tempest can like morph together and form a Legion boss enemy, which is like if the Avogadro pack-a-punched himself and then took a bunch of steroids. Cold War also gave us the Kranzi Soldat, aka the Panzer Soldat. Would it be 3 or 4.0? I think it would be 3.0, right? Because you had the original in Origins, you had the DE in Revelations 1, and then you had this one. Yeah, so 3.0. He's got a flamethrower and an arm cannon, and he can do melee attacks. And he is armored to the gills, and of course he has a jetpack. This is just the Soviet's version of the Panzer Soldat. And if you are having trouble with this in Outbreak, Mauer, or Forsaken, you want to use either like Shatter Blast or Cryo Freeze, something that can do elemental damage from explosive and cryo elements, because the cranky Sodat will take additional damage from those elements. We also have the Abomination, which is this game's version of the Margwad. Now do you kind of see what I mean when I said like there really wasn't anything memorable? It was kind of just like copy and paste older stuff. Now the Abomination has three different modes of attack. It can either bite you if you're close enough. They can use an ethereal beam that's emitted from one of their heads. Or it can just straight up say f*** it and just charge at you. 
it literally has that like primal like instinct that just says fuck it i'm just gonna charge at him what's the worst that could happen and the margua 2.0s i don't really have an opinion either way of them they're they're just meh and the last kind of big boss battle we got for Cold War is going to be against the Forsaken. And this is one of those boss battles where like the big bad boss is kind of like in the background slowly attacking you. But really he's just summoning everything else to come and kill you and occasionally he'll throw out some little attack. But as long as you can avoid it and just keep randomly shooting at him, you're going to get that health bar to eventually go down. But the biggest threat is not the Forsaken himself. It's the million mimics, the panzers, and all the other people that he spawns in to try to come kill you especially when all the regular zombies are just getting buffed by a disciple every 10 seconds. Whenever you get the chance and you're not dying, just make sure you shoot at this guy's stomach. You'll take him out pretty quick. Or well, I should say, Samantha will. You ain't doing shit. Now, I do not consider Vanguard Zombies canon whatsoever, and if I can refrain from putting it in a video, I absolutely would. But a lot of people would get mad at me, so I'm just gonna zip through these real quick. You got only a couple different really unique variants. You got the Boom Schreier, who is a kamikaze you know, real special. You got the Sturmkrieger. This guy will just shoot at you. Very, very annoying. Then you got like these two deity gods. You got Cordifex and Zabala. And that is it for Vanguard. I refuse to touch any more of it. Now I saved the best boss zombie for last, and that is the player themselves. At the end of Mob of the Dead's Easter egg, you have a choice. You can either all gang up on the poor weasel, or he can fight back and take you down. So the most dangerous boss zombie of all time the best boss zombie is the player themselves i know really making you think really pulling out the philosophy card here so that is where this video is going to come to an end hopefully you guys enjoyed and if you guys did make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and also down below out of all the boss zombies slash unique zombies that we have seen thus far which one is your all-time favorite let me know down there below and again, sorry that there was no Dead Ops Arcade or other zombie games. This video was already long enough, and I really wanted to keep it just Treyarch ground-based maps. Again, I apologize. But I'm going to shut up and let you guys go. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.